Hello and welcome back to Plan Product Owner Video Edition. This is your host, Scott. So we've already talked about one of the uh, opportunities that we have here in our first 30 days or X days for a new product owner. Look, if you're just starting out with the organization or new to the role, again, there are some things that you know that you need to do, some things you may not know you need to do. So I'm here to help you with that. The first 30 days or the first uh, part one, I guess, if we're talking about a product owner with a development plan, maybe that was a little too straightforward for you. But now we're getting our feet wet here and I want to give you an approach, some example approaches maybe and some things to think about and consider as you're getting into month two or the second iteration of your journey here with your new organization or in your new role for that matter. So before we get into that, make sure you've checked out the first plan, of course, and that should put your feet on some solid ground because we're building some thinking patterns and we're building some abilities to help us on our journey to become a little bit better as we go okay and that's what we want so you already should have an idea about the organization's method their work management styles and some of the frameworks you should be acquainted with the product and the technical implications and those sorts of things and you know who to contact uh, if you get into trouble or if you get into a jam i hope you I hope you got that anyways. So for the next 30 days, just some concepts here to help you be successful in this journey. Um, now it's time to continue to work with the team, but we want to really get more to a predictable cadence at this point. We want to try to figure that out. We also want to try to figure out and compare and contrast our team with the rest of the organization, because quite honestly, as a product owner, it's going to be pretty soon, it's going to be time for you to start selling your team a little bit more. Okay. And you're getting some traction with each other because I've already cautioned you. I've already expressed to you how important it is to learn learning styles, not just your own, but your learning styles of your team members as well. And that's important. So you're starting to realize some non-standardized methods that may be taking place here that, um, that the organization might be promoting. And it may be some areas that you might be able to improve those workflows or those processes, okay? Um, but you got to show patience in this, right? Because you're still the new person. If you've already concluded that there's a better way of doing it and that your way is the best, I would just really... Uh, caution you in sharing that okay uh, because you don't want to jump too soon remember we're just now in month two now in your terms this could be second quarter this could be second year i don't know uh, wherever you are on this journey I, I think you will be the best to judge that but just don't jump to the conclusions yet because you may not have all of the data yet to make sure uh, that you have enough confidence to just say, this is the way we need to be doing things now. Okay. Um, I think it's really important for you at this point too, uh, to find your alpha dev. And if you don't know what that is, go check out the podcast episode, uh, about the alpha dev. So now let's jump into three things here that I think are important for you as a product owner and your new gig. This is again, month two. All right, or your second iteration, second leg here. So you want to start establishing team or domain language. I think this is really important. I think this is something that a lot of teams struggle with. So I'm going to help you understand what I mean by that and why it's important for domain language. First, we're going to start cutting through a lot of the, the jargon that we might use uh, and explanations behind, you know, who does what and what this system and this module is called and under this condition and that condition, we qualify this person as that this thing or that thing. We're going to cut through that by establishing domain language. I'm going to show you what that means in a minute. You want to identify what separates your team from the rest and you want to routinely hold valuable work sessions. Now, you've already inherited and adopted the existing working agreements, definitions of done, things like that. Um, and so you may want to start uh, looking to uh, fine tune those and improve them as you go. It's probably a good time to start doing that because you've gotten some traction with your team. Now, when we talk about the domain language, this last bullet point here, qualifying the actors. I talk a lot about this in my story workshops and in my story videos, story writing techniques and things like that. I'll get to that in another video. So uh, when you go back and this will make sense to you after you've seen those, but I'll give you just a basic idea of what I'm talking about here. When I say qualify routine actors, I mean, are they authenticated? Or are they unauthenticated? Are they already signed in? Are they subscribed? Are they not subscribed? Are they a candidate? Are they a potential? Are they an existing? Are they a certain segment? Um, you know, the more you qualify the actor, then what you're doing is go back to the previous video and why I'm teaching you to think in terms of precondition, trigger, and post condition. I want a routine, accepted, understood team agreement that says uh, our unauthenticated uh, user who is not signed up 
we want to qualify that actor. Okay. We already know who we're talking about at that point. So if we start kind of nailing down what those are, and you know, I've seen some teams and I've even coached some teams use a name there. You know, I mean, as you grow into this, you're going to get into customer journeys and systems thinking and journey maps and things like that. And they talk about all these different scenarios where you can use personas. Go ahead and assign a persona to an unauthenticated mobile app user, or go ahead and assign, uh, assign a persona to uh, a, 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 an authenticated user who has a certain product already. Okay. Uh, so the more you can do that, the better. And you're starting to establish your team domain language. I'm not going to spend much more time on that because I'll show you all of that in the story writing workshops that we're going to do. Uh, so use an existing definition of done. Wait for it. You are looking for opportunities to improve that. You're trying to fine tune and tweak that, but we're not actually going to pull the trigger on that yet. We're going to wait and hold off until we have more data. So you're obviously going to collaborate and approve and agree on the working agreements that you've already inherited. I've got a great video out there on working agreements and how to help that. So make sure you're checking that one out too. Qualify your basic scenarios and agree on terms and definitions. If we're using the word workflow to describe a sequence of events that takes place in our solution, then let's use the word workflow. Let's don't use the word pattern. If we're talking about UI and UX design and how that flows and we want to use the word pattern, great, let's use that. But whatever that looks like and feels like to you and your team, whatever kind of domain you're in and what you're working on, it's largely going to drive that for you. But start qualifying these scenarios and giving them the right labels and context so that the team knows exactly what we're talking about and there's no confusion on the terms and the definitions. It's really what domain language is about. And it's time for you and your team to start ramping that up and agreeing on that now that you're in your second month or second iteration of your journey, okay? Remember that you're still the new person here and folks still may be somewhat suspicious of you and why you're here. Uh, so I want you to keep that in mind. So before you go burning down the house to kill a cockroach, <laughs> okay, make sure that you understand that you're trying to gain trust and buy-in from your team and you want to be intentional about what you're doing. So always follow up, right? If you don't know the answer, tell them you don't know the answer, but you're going to find out. And when you find out, go back and tell them, okay? So when we're talking about this first area that I want you to focus on in your second day, uh, second iteration or second cycle here, Building trust with the team, that's that's at the core, right? You want the team to speak the same language. And you're noticing we're putting a lot of emphasis on the team at this point in the second iteration. Establish your working agreements and make sure that those are fine-tuned. So let's jump to the second thing that I think are really important here, the, the big topic for us, is we want to introduce strategies for built-in quality. Now, I want you to be very careful if test-driven development is not being used, if automated testing is not being used. I want you to be really careful in introducing this, but I do want you to introduce the stories. So I didn't say go run through the brick wall and say, we're going to be TDD or none, or we're going to use BDD or nothing. That's not the approach for you yet. Okay. Be tactful when you're trying to approach this. And remember, not everybody's on the same part of the journey that you are. And that's why I'm here to help you enlighten your path maybe to your journey. Okay. But remember, not everybody's there yet with you. Okay. So if the organization's not using it, be really careful. If they are using it, then great. Maybe we're just assimilating into that. You're starting where you are. And then you start doing your uh, inspect and adapt and you want to try to figure out a better way to move forward. Right. But the idea is at the very least, start introducing the strategy so that we can reduce waste and rework. That's really what you're up for, right? And you want to gauge the appetite of some of these strategies. You know, cost may be a factor when it comes to automated testing. Uh, cost may be a factor when it comes to test-driven development, you know, or maybe training, any of those kinds of things. But there are some things that we can do, right, at the team level. And there are some teams really at the program level, if you're in the scaled sense, right, that you can take advantage of, particularly with automated testing. It's really important to do that. Now, why, Scott, are you telling me to do this now? I want you to introduce it. I didn't say implement it. I said introduce the idea because really what you're trying to do right now in your job is to make sure that you're setting expectations around built-in quality. And that's a critical part of the journey for you as a product owner. Because remember what the Scrum Guide says, you are maximizing the value produced by the team. you got to keep that in mind. So if you want to maximize value, you're not going to maximize value unless you have quality. Now, 
everybody's going to say, Hey, if we do this now, there's going to cost us, you know, I got, I got an answer for that. Just hang on. Okay. But collaborate on the strategies to provide that built in quality with your team. Make sure that you can satisfy the ranges and the test coverage percentages if the automated testing already exists. How are you going to do that? You're going to do that with your stories. And I've got some strategies again later on in other videos to help you with that. But get ideas from the team and other teams even about some techniques. Maybe get them, get them involved with the decision and with the conversation on how we're going to introduce strategies to ensure that we have built-in quality. Okay. Now, the acceptance criteria and the definition of done. Two different things. Got another video on that. But it's important for you guys to start acknowledging the fact that, hey, we've adopted this thing. Maybe it's time for us to move forward a little bit and make this our own, okay? Um, making sure that you're uh, getting into uh, testing, right? You want testers in the elaboration sessions. You want them there. And exploring some ideas. And just remember to keep focusing on the fact that nothing is ever final. It's not final, final. We can always iterate, okay? So your objectives here for this strategy of built-in quality is really understanding the appetite. You want to reinforce the quality at the start. You want to make sure you're setting that expectation. You're planting a seed and you're assimilating into what they currently offer into your new role or your new organization, okay? So this is the second thing, the second topic, I think, or area of a focus that I think is important for you in this second iteration of your journey with the new org. Let's look at the third one and the final one here. Learn more about the why. We already kind of figured out why we were doing this or what we were trying to do. Not really so much why. So, I mean, some why, not a lot of why. We want to make sure that we can learn more about that. So you may not have all the data yet to make all the decisions, right? Remember, I told you in the previous one, uh, in part one of this video, that you may not have all of the data, but you do have somebody helping to make decisions or prioritizing for you, right? Now, you're still probably not quite ready to take over the world, unless, of course, that was in your job description, then go take over the world, right? Uh, but find out where you and the team belong in the order of things here. And so what we're looking to do here is to figure out what does this button do? And I don't mean just like right in the system either. I mean, like, what does this button do in the conversation that I'm having in the work session that I'm having and how I'm collaborating with people? If can I push this button or do I need to lay off of this button? Can I push it harder? Right? So those are kind of the whys that we're talking about here. What does your experience through your observations tell you to do differently? These are things that you're not executing yet. You're just putting them in the back of your mind. Okay. Evaluate your strengths and your challenges and some of your potential contributions, because right now what you're doing is you're finding your identity. You're finding your way around. You know where the ketchup is in the diner. Now it's all about, hey, I like this on the menu, but I despise that. And you're getting ready to start picking that stuff. Okay. What makes you so special? What makes you and your team so special here? Continue to observe the events of other teams. Explore teams, uh, explore things that separate you and your group from the rest of the group. And continue to build your network and getting to know folks. And by the way, hold on to that new person card just as long as you possibly can for now, okay? Uh, learn more about your team's potential, the impacts that you can make on the organization and your team. And uh, obviously, we're all, again, agile and agility and having agility is all customer centric. So we're keep that in mind. So when we're talking about improving outcomes, these are the things and these are the areas that you want to make sure that you're impacting. So let's recap second month or month two or second iteration, however we want to call that. Put more focus on the team. Establish and clarify domain and team language. We want to make sure that we're working on that. You want to position yourself to sell your team position your team too, right? To be sold because you can't do that, right? You can't sell them unless they're in a position to be sold and find your space, find your group, set quality and value expectations up front with real strategies. That's really what you're wanting to try to accomplish in this month to second month, second iteration of your journey with your new group. Uh, you've got a firm understanding of who owns the backlog, right? You've got a list of strategies for built in quality to pick from. Didn't say implement yet, but you've got a list to start picking from at a later time. Um, the team knows how to operate and knows how to talk with each other. Um, you're starting to learn what buttons to push and if you can push them harder or not. Now, one thing that's important, and I don't know if I touched on it in the previous slide, but make your calendar behave. Set an ideal calendar and make your calendar behave. So if you need to block out time for your personal share care time in your own backlog, if you need to block out time with any stakeholder or a team member or whatever it is, particularly your alpha dev 
encouraged to go listen to that one. Uh, make sure that you're doing that and behave by your calendar. Make your calendar make you behave, okay, when you set up that ideal calendar, okay? So you really want to position yourself to move forward, blaze trails, have expectations set and met, right? And you want to try to pave the way for your team. So you're not going to be able to do that unless you find out kind of what separates you two, right, uh, from the rest of the pack, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for uh, month three or the third iteration on your journey with your new organization or in your new role, or even if you're just recentering and wanting to shock your system, I think this is all great help. Let me know what you think about this, and if you enjoyed this, please don't forget the podcast, Planet Product Owner, on your favorite platform. And until next time. Have a safe and fun lean journey, my friends.